Stay tuned for Trucker's Life Radio, coming up next on dncradio.live. Industry Movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of. And join us on social media. Learn more at TruckingMovesAmerica.com. Hello and welcome to TNC Radio.Live. This is Truckers Life Radio. And now here's your host, Ron Frazier. Good evening and welcome to Truckers Life Radio on TNC Radio.Live, where we're here to help those in the trucking community on life's highway. And tonight I am your host, Craig Mart, filling in for Ron Frazier, who is out this evening. And I'm looking forward to the conversation that we get to have with our guests today. Before we get to that, though, if you have a question or an area of interest that you would like discussed, because we need your ideas, please send us an email to truckerslife at tncradio.live. So I'm excited about our guest. He's a guy that I think will be very contagious to hear what he has to say, some of the things that he has been through to get to the point where God is using him. And you're going to sense very quickly his passion for God, living by faith, the gospel, and giving out Bible. So Paul Stege is our guest this evening on Trucker's Life Radio. So Paul, how are you doing tonight? Doing very, very well. I'm doing, it's such an honor to be here. I don't feel like I, de- I even deserve to even be here today. So it's such an honor to even say the name of Jesus, let alone be on this. And as my wife and I prayed before this even happened, it's like, Lord, I didn't even sign up for this, Lord. So I know you must be here. So I'm just going to walk through a door I really have never, ever walked through. So I'm excited to uh, be here and see what the Holy Spirit's going to do with this. Yeah, man, that's great. That's like so many of us or so many who are listening to this, just regular guys uh, wanting to learn and, and grow. So tell us a little bit about who is Paul Stege, some of your story, some of your grown up years, some of the things that you've had to overcome to be where God has you today with Paul Stege Ministries. Well, we, uh, you know, growing up, I grew up in a very religious church and, and like so many of us, uh, very troubled background. I had a mom that was just totally amazing and the rest, you know, um, I learned so much through it, um, you know, through the negative stuff. I, 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 I heard one guy say when I first got saved, um, you either become a victim or a victor. And so in many aspects, you know, my, my dad, who I hope I prayed with him when he, when, when he passed on to be on, on the other side, I hope, I hope that that prayer was real, that he actually did go to heaven. Um, but I learned so much through him, through what not to do. And it was ingrained in me. So from a very, very young age, God used the circumstances that I was in to produce some of the fruit that I'm seeing now. And I would have never, ever, ever would have thought that way back in the day, as so many of us go through so much and we think why. And then a lot of times it's just so many years after, maybe even decades after that you see the the benefit of all of it. And, And so a lot of the markers that were, produced in me way, way young was about truth. Even though I was not Mm -hmm. saved to never, ever, you know, hear truth um, and, and, and to suffer from those circumstances was preparing me and and the incredible weakness that I had way back then um, could not talk and wasn't really till I was 40 that, and we'll get over that or we'll talk more about that later, I would assume, but um, just not having a very high esteem of myself or um, in a young age and not ever thinking I would be anything in any form or fashion. And then having all of that truth stuff come down, it kind of prepared me for when the true father would come in that would never lie, how I embraced truth and how I embraced his word. And even then didn't really even ever imagine anything could ever be used with me in any form or fashion. Um at all. Definitely not high IQ, definitely not anything that anybody would ever desire in any form or fashion. Mm -hmm. Uh, And God just totally, you know, used all of that weakness and to, uh, to produce. And and I don't even think I'm anything anyways. Now it's all him and not me. I will just chunk crowns at his feet is my favorite expression. 
Yeah, nice. So how old were you when you finally accepted Christ as your Savior then? I was 20 years old, um, uh, neither 19 or right before. Tw- I think I was 20 at the time. And uh, I, we were, you know, I'd kind of turned to partying and turned to, you know, kind of losing myself through the family. That's how I escaped what was going on all the time was just to go out and drink and, and, and do things. So I had some really, really close friends. You know, that's how it kind of goes. Your family structure is not very. And again, my mom, my brother's fantastic, but it was such a, uh, a different kind of household. Um, and again, so many of us struggle, you know, uh, with so many of those things growing up without Jesus. And, you know, the good news is my mom came to know Jesus as at 56 when and just was a saint all the way until she passed on a couple mm-hmm. just a year and a half ago was a true follower. But yeah, it, it, uh, it, it started when I was 20, I had a couple of buddy, friends of mine die um, the night before, or really that night after I left them. And I just really thought about death at that point and had people speaking in my life, in my l- l- life, you know, with this question, you know, if you were to die today, where are you going and why? And I, I said I was a Lutheran and I was going to be saved because I was baptized at birth and I believed in, in, in God, but they were bugging me and that truth just kept coming around until I actually uh, met a person that was part of a televangelism ministry. And that, that pastor actually led me to Jesus when I was 20. Mm. Yeah, that's neat. I think we can all relate to, you know, identity issues and seeking acceptance and finding that in all, all the wrong places. So that's pretty cool to, to have heard, heard that from you. Uh, I mean, next question I want to find out is, so how did you get involved in the trucking industry? Tell us real quickly. About I, that. At 18 year, year, years old, before I was saved, um, I've been saved now quite a long time. I'm 56, but uh, at, at, at 18, I started with this wonderful company called UPS and uh, um, started out in the load and unload. And I, I became a part-time supervisor for a little while. And then I went into package car. Uh, drove for 15, 16 years in package car down here in Texas and in the extreme heat yeah. and, and uh, an opportunity came. It was so interesting. You know, my wife is such a vital part of, of who I am. And, and I'll, I'll go back to that a little bit. Um, I never, ever thought I would ever be married. I thought who would ever want to marry someone who could not talk and didn't have giftings and didn't have anything, but uh, she did and we did. And so she's always kind of spoke life into me um, in a, in a, in a, in a, you know, cause I was just ultra negative. You know, when you think about it, Craig, uh, pride has two sides to it. Um, when you think about pride, you think about the, the person who's cocky and the person who is, you know, over him, you know, just all about himself. And then, the other side, I call it reverse pride, which is you're so negative on yourself and you're so negative on everything and, and your, your self-esteem is so low that you're really stuck on the same thing. When you really think about it, it's twofold. You know, pride the other way, you're stuck on yourself in a negative way and pride on this side, you're still stuck on yourself, mm, yep. except on the, on the reverse side. So my, my bride always kind of spoke life into me at that point. And I'm just so very, very grateful that she did that and in, in, into the fact that she actually married me and we actually started. So she wanted me to go into semis and I was just like, no way. I don't want to go into semis, but my body was breaking <laughs> down and uh, just terribly. So, and I, cause I don't know how to turn off and right. I don't know how to run as many packages as, as I was doing. And we were doing, I just ran all day long and, and just my shoulders and my knees and everything. So when this opportunity came up for me to go into semis, which was a totally different world than package car, package car, you saw everybody in every day and had a route and were able to say, you know, talk with people. And I thought never, ever would I ever think that Jesus would want me in, in semis and working nights and being on call at first and so hard for this family structure uh, cause you know, at UPS, you're on call at first for a long time and you can be called seven days a week. And I know many of you identify with this seven days a week, your 10 hours are up, 11 hours are up and bam, you're right back into it again. And your whole 
structure. You don't know where you're going, when you're going. And I know I have a structure in UPS and I really can't identify with so many of the wonderful independent contractors that have to deal with fuel prices and have to deal with maintenance and all of those things. But the Lord just showed me to do it. And wow, the whole, my life changed. And the final caveat was for what I went into semis was the Lord just showed me in a really sovereign way where, you know, there's these markers in your life where you get to hear God speak really clearly. And that marker was, he just, I, I was like a cat in a toilet bowl that didn't want to go in the water. Now I know I'm showing my cruel side, but um, <laughs> as a kid, but the Lord just showed me um, that I was going to learn about him, that he was going to pay me to learn about him. And I had no idea what that meant until my brother Mark and his wife Patsy sent me um, a verse by verse by a pastor named Joe Foch, Calvary Chapel um, of um, of Philadelphia, where I got got to uh, learn about, and I've never was was taught line by line expository teaching ever. And this man just kept continuing to talk about the Holy Spirit. And that's where my life totally changed. Uh, That's great. And I think that's going to be so relatable to so many people, uh, just kind of normal stuff that happened. And, and we need to take a break here real quick, but after we come back, we're going to get into more of the practical side of things on why in the world are you even talking as much as you do? And how did you balance, you know, the, the truck driving work, family, you know, ministry piece, like how do all that stuff balance? So we're going to talk about that after this break. Join Shelly Johnson and Kathy Takaro every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time for Women Road Warriors on your driver navigation station, tncradio.live. You're listening to Trucker's Life Radio on tncradio.live. I'm Shelly Johnson with Kathy Takaro. You can hear us Tuesdays on TNCRadio.live at 8 p.m. Eastern on Women Road Warriors. And don't miss Steve Summers' Overnight Drive right here on TNCRadio.live. Weeknights, midnight to 5 a.m. Eastern. Brought to you by Hot Shot Secret. Welcome back to Trucker's Life Radio on TNC Radio Live. We're going to continue our conversation with Paul Stege. So, Paul, you introduced us to a little bit of who you are and where you've come from and how you got into trucking. The question I want to ask now, because this is kind of amazing and only of the Lord, is how in the world is it that you are doing public speaking? You could just share a little bit about that. Wow, yeah. Um, when I was 40, like I said, um, I... I literally could not talk. Nothing had really changed. I know for, for 20 years being saved and, and God had just provided, you know, all those things that I ever, ever thought would never happen. I wouldn't, I, you know, I never thought I would have a wife. I never thought I would have children. I never thought I'd be able to provide, you know, and that's what I want to always encourage every young man that he maybe is not educated or maybe, you know, just wants to follow Jesus that, you step out and you obey him and live within your own tax bracket that he is able to produce all those things that as a, as a husband that you need, because basically anyways, as any good man knows, it's, it's, it's Jesus inside of you. That is the producer of everything. You just follow and work as, as unto him. So when I was 40, I began, I remember just kind of being really honestly, if I could be very honest, very honest, being very discouraged you know, with the church and with, um, and again, I didn't leave the church. Just, I just felt like there was no place in for, for me in, 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 inside of the church. And I remember there was just some circumstances that happened that I don't need to go into. We all had plenty of blood on our hands sure, sure. as far as not acting correctly. Like so often we do when we're not Holy spirit filled and following. Um, I remember just saying to the Lord, Jesus, if you don't help me, I mean, if, if uh, Jesus, I don't care if I ever have a friend, ever, a brother in Christ, I don't really care. And that was after being bitter for a few weeks, you know, a month or so. And <laughs> I just came to a point where I was like, I'm not going to quit. Jesus, you're real. I'm just going to tell everybody about you with my stuttering lips. And I don't care. I just don't care. Yes. And so he showed me to get a Bibles and, and, 
this is all Holy Spirit stuff. And, and I would just pray. And at the same time, when we were closing on the last segment, I was listening to Joe Foch, Calvary Chapel, Philly. Great app, by the way. Um, it's free, line by line teaching. And uh, I just learned about the Holy Spirit that, and I had been taught about the Holy Spirit long ago, you know, that it was when I was early 20s, a man named Floyd Jones taught it perfectly, but I centered in on the gifts of the Holy Spirit instead of the giver. And when I didn't get the gift I thought I was supposed to get, I was frustrated and then didn't understand it was, it was the power to be a witness. That was the big thing. And you're a witness wherever you go, whether you're a witness as a husband, as a, as a dad, as a, a witness of evangelism, but you are to be a witness, not go. And I understood that. So I just prayed, Lord, I want to tell everybody about you and line them up, Lord. And, and, uh, and he started to, and I tell you, at first it was hard because I didn't, I was just so in onto myself. Remember the, ne- you know, the negative pride. Thing? Yeah, yeah. And, and then I began telling people about Jesus with my stuttering lips, could not talk. I would be one of those ugly 80% yeah. stutters. And I don't mean ugly in a bad way, but just really hard to live to listen to. And then to my astonishment, uh, to my shock, and I'll throw crowns at his feet, people were actually getting saved, which was just stupid. The (laughs) foolishness of God. And uh, so he started working with me like that. And uh, Proverbs 23, 23 says, buy the truth and sell it not. So we just kept buying God's word, telling more people about Jesus. I failed a lot but it's called learning. You're being made into his image and uh, you learn to say things and, and he shows you things. And, and so then it seemed like until one time there was a opportunity, somebody wanted me to get up and talk about what's going on at a church. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding. I can't talk. And then the Lord just showed me that he was going to meet me at the altar, but I had to drag my flesh from the being seated down to get up there at the podium and that the Holy spirit would embrace me there. Yeah. Spirit is ready, yeah. but the flesh is weak. My flesh did not want to get up, but the spirit joined me at, at the, uh, yeah. at, at the podium. That's great. And when I, you know, I hear that. And when I listen to some other stuff that you have uh, spoken on, I think it, what excuse does anybody have to not share? For you to overcome and the Holy Spirit to to do whatever he's been doing in your life and to use your voice. I just, I love it. And like nobody else has any kind of an excuse. So I really love and appreciate that part. Uh, With switching to the practical side of with with, with trucking and family life and all that kind of stuff, because the job is so taxing and away from home a lot, depending on the situation people are in. So could you share a little bit real quick on how did you balance, you know, family, you know, being married, raising kids, making those decisions, staying connected because man, divorce and issues are so prevalent within the trucking community. So if you could share a little bit about that, please. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's victory in every single thing and every circumstance that God puts you in and has peace about it that you have when you follow. And, and again, nobody does it perfectly and I'll be chunking crowns at his feet, but to balance out the family aspect of it, Do you know when in Colossians 3, there's this wonderful, like 1 through 16, there's this wonderful, uh, you know, back and forth where it says, mortify the deeds of your flesh, put on this, put off, put on, put on, put off. And and what's so beautiful about that is that as a man, I don't got what it takes to do any of these things, but, but Jesus does. And the Holy Spirit was given. That's why it's a better covenant to put on and, and the lack of sleep thing that I can just only speak to that. I mean, I only speak to that to so many of us out there when we get that lack of sleep and we get up after a few hours of sleep when our family is on the other side of that door, you have to put on Jesus and they'll know the difference. And it's the Holy spirit. And it's just as simple as saying, Holy spirit, fill me. I know you didn't sleep. Lord, I know, but you gave us something as a Holy Spirit inside of us that I cannot produce. I cannot produce goodness right now because I'm, I'm a wretch inside and I don't want to be nice, but I have to put you on and I have, to, I have to balance that out with what you can do through me, not who I am to my family, because that's not good enough. 
I want the best, which is, which is you inside of me so that I can produce and be something that my children can, can look at and can see you inside of me, not me. And that I can just chunk crowns. So I pray with that. And I, and, and with my wife, you know, we, it's a, it's a crazy life. And, um, but we balance it out with, I pray with my wife on the phone, like a, example for, for, for me, I'm just a, you know, a daily run guy, but I start work at midnight. And so when I get on the road at around 1230, I call my, you know, my wife, I get up at nine, we'll spend time together till about 11. I head into work. And then when, when I get on the road, that's our prayer time, our talk time. So we'll, we'll just talk and pray on the phone. When, when I get on, of course, I have a headset and a Bluetooth and everything, but yeah, yep. we'll uh, pray on the phone hour and, you know, hour. We'll, we'll, we'll talk, we'll laugh, we'll, we'll discuss family things and, and things that, that we need to do or pray for. But, the, but there's ways of, of staying close, even though you're, you're gone a lot and your, your hours are weird. And, but it's a connectivity of the Holy Spirit who is bound to the marriage that is what holds everything together for me to be a better husband and for her to be a better wife by the Holy Spirit, you know? Wow. That's great. I mean, that honoring that, that covenant and how much of a choice that is. I like the way how you put that and even just that practical thing there. Um, in addition, you mentioned just the, the physical side of things when you were doing more of the delivery things, what other difficulties are there from your side of things, even as a more local uh, you know, driver, what are some of the more physical or, or spiritual struggles you face as a professional driver? Well, it's, 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 it's the demands, it's the equipment, it's the problems, and it's all the things that we face every single day. There's always a blowout. There's always some sort of, <laughs> some sort of something. There's always something that goes down, as any trucker will know, whether it's the and, – and you have to put Jesus on when, even when, when you're driving because you can become – really aggressive and you can be kind of really angry and and i see it all the time and it's just like you know when when i i i i heard this a long time ago and when when i when when you look at people driving and you look at them dry, acting crazy and being dumb it's it's a time to not react to it but it's a time to pray for in the fact that either they're loaded off their minds just don't know what's going on and so someone's maybe a, a person is driving down the road and maybe they don't do something the right thing, but you got to re remember we're all human and we don't know that that person just didn't leave the cancer doctor that they've never been to. And they've been diagnosed with something yep. that uh, is horrific and their mind is blown and they don't need to hear that horn. They don't need to, you just need to intercede and pray as much as you can for everybody around you. Because at the end of the day, it's an opportunity to do something that the Holy Spirit leads you to instead of something your flesh drives. Yeah, nice. I love that you're describing your desire to stay connected to the Holy Spirit. So your life just oozes that out because I don't drive truck. Uh, I have had a CDL for a while, and it is hard not to to want to pray words of condemnation versus understanding and grace and that kind of thing. So um we need to take another break here. So we're going to take a break and then come back and get into how do things shift from you and your upbringing and even you know, the stuttering to being involved in the trucking. How did that turn into some kind of a ministry? And so we'll start to talk about that when we come back after this break. Trucking Moves America Forward, or TMAF, is boosting the image of the industry by telling the story of trucking. And your story can be part of it. Upload a photo. Tell us what you love about trucking or send us a story about a good deed or charitable act in trucking. Be sure to follow us on social media and contact us through truckingmovesamerica.com. That's truckingmovesamerica.com. Hot Shots Secret presents Steve Summers Overnight Drive nightly at midnight Eastern, 11 Central on TNCRadio.live or download the app .tncradio.live. Don't forget, you can hear all of our TNC Radio primetime shows again on our podcasts. Just go to tncradio.live slash podcasts or search for tncradio.live wherever you listen to podcasts.
tncradio.live, your commercial driver navigation station. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Cortman, and now for the Mental Health Minute. My third grade teacher, Mrs. Tuminello, used to say, a word to the wise, and we would all have to say in unison, it's sufficient. Well, I have learned after 35 plus years of therapy, a word to the wise isn't always sufficient. In fact, sometimes we need to be encouraged. We need to be reminded. We need to get a second DUI. We need to have somebody walk out on us. We need our physician to say, if you don't stop smoking next year, I'll be here for the physical, but you won't. Sometimes we need to have things repeated over and over until we finally get it. And sometimes it takes many words to the wise to be sufficient. And Mrs. Tuminello, God bless you wherever you might be at this time. Hey, and welcome back again to Trucker's Life Radio on TNC Radio Live. I'm your host, Craig Mart, and we're going to continue talking with Paul Stiege. So, Paul, we've heard a lot about your story and getting over some things you've gotten over and the issues dealing with family and just being on the road and other drivers and those kind of things. What I want us to hear from you next is how did all that stuff turn into Paul Stiege Ministries? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me as you see it on paper or what you've heard so far. So how did that translate translate into a ministry? Well, you know, what's really crazy about this whole thing is I never saw any of this ever happening. And I've never seen any of this. Even this is ridiculous to me. You know, the first, first Corinthians 1, you know, talks about how not many noble, not many wise are called, but God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. And I still don't see how any of this is happening. <laughs> I still don't know why any of it could possibly happen, except that, you remember, there, one thing leads to another, and that is such a spiritual truth, and the fact that you actively obey everything God is calling you to do at that point by the power of the Holy Spirit. But you have to put on, like we talked about in the last section, you have to put on Colossians 3. You have to put it on. It's a willing choice. It's something that, yep, you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.5 talks about that. But it's daily refills. And you can go through the book of Acts and you can see that. Daily refills. They were dependent on there. Peter was filled in Acts chapter 2 and 4. And I mean, you just go on and on and on for all the things that we need. And that's just what it is. So we began doing Bibles. And then we kind of progressed doing imprinted Bibles for people that we would come across. And, you know, I'd come into work every day. There's so many guards, different kind of guards on UPS. And there's so many loaders and God just opened my eyes and imprinted Bibles is such a huge part of what we do. Um, it's such the high impact. You're talking, putting someone's name on the Bible, getting yeah. a name, giving it to them. They don't know it's coming. And you give this Bible to a person and their mind is blown always. I don't care if they're rich or poor. They see their name on a Bible and, and they just look at it. And then at that point, because you're so sacrificial in, in giving something, you're not coming to them with some sort of trick clipboard question or something and evangelizing back doorway. You're, inter you're giving somebody a copy of the word of God and you begin at that point and they're just like, wow. And, I, and then I'll just say something like, you know, is what we did back then or still still today you know your name is on it but you know if you were to die today where, you, where are you going and why and now that person is so much more apt to answer that question because they know you care and and then you'll get pandora's box i mean all all day long and and so we began doing that more and more and more and we were using sam's club back in the day to buy our Bibles. They had a nice Bible, a new King James and King James for 15 bucks. And we weren't in ministry then. Um, we, we just kept buying Bibles. And one day I remember going to the table and they had a whole brand new because we were buying a lot. And the Lord just, I remember watching, looking at this whole table and I just thought in my brain, 
Lord, I'd love to be able to buy this whole table. I thought it. I didn't think, I didn't say a word. And we bought like two or three, got them imprinted. And the next day a check came in from a man named Floyd Jones, who I sat under as a Bible teacher. And he currently had cancer and he checked for 500 bucks. And I called him like, what are you doing? What, what <laughs> is this awesome. for? And he goes, people are getting saved. You know, cause I was calling him when we were talking and, you know, just sharing on what going on in life, you know? And then he said, young man, you, you, you take that. I can't do what you're doing right now and you obey. And, and so we began and all of a sudden money started coming in like crazy again, mind you, I'm not very highly thinking of myself. I've never really have. And it came to a point where we either had to stop or we had to start a ministry because there was too much money coming in our name. Now God has forbidden me to ever ask for a penny from anybody. So we don't, mm -hmm. and we don't have a website. I just obey as the Holy Spirit leads me to. I'm not looking for work at all. I just want a leading and I want to complete the tasks, whatever he's calling me to do each and every day. And that can be as simple as what, whatever it is. One thing leads to another is all I can say. And, and that's he's building you into an image, not a better Craig, not a better Paul. Yeah. But the image of Jesus Christ, and what does yes. that look like? We see good pictures of that in the gospel. But as you obey, he's going to follow. I mean, he's going to impart. So spirit-led is, is spirit-fed. And so for, for us, it just started. And then all of a sudden, people started wanting Bibles. And it was really crazy. And we began supplying. And by the end of the month, the money would always be there. Now, the, at first, it was small. It's always small be, be, uh, beginnings. And those are the, the places where you want to let God work inside of you and not expecting that you'll ever be turned into anything, but just obey God in the moment and fulfill that. And I have done this so much shaking. I mean, now it's just insanity. Um, it always has been. But now to, to the level of what is required every month to even move this ministry but to him it's easy to me it's the mental block yeah and i have to have the holy spirit move through that and and that's where it's at i mean we're we'll probably hit two hundred thousand bibles that the uh, uh, this year um that we have given plus and that we have have given away that god puts in contact networks all over you know and again i'm not looking for work, I'm obeying what God is yeah. showing us to do as it appears. Even this radio show, I, we, as we prayed earlier with my wife, it's, Lord, I didn't sign up for this, but I just want to shine you and make everybody know that there is strength through weakness. And Craig, if there's one other passage that magnifies this, it's 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. And it says, for my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So there's nobody that has any excuse. There really isn't. Um, yep. Because what that says, the weaker you are, and I, I like to use the slang on this, but the weaker you are, the better you are. And that's the truth. I mean, I expect great things because I am so weak and in, inadequate, but he is so incredibly strong. And it's like if you had a, a semi that had no engine in it and all the bolts and all the Everything was there for an engine to be fitted inside of it. The Holy Spirit is that perfect fit that fits inside and he desires to use each and every one of us in the most magnificent way. And will we ever believe it? That's the biggest part of it. Get over yourself and understand that the King of Kings and Lord of Lords has it. So we've never asked for a penny. We're approaching 700,000 Bibles in the last five years all across the whole world. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, I don't even understand all this stuff. Now, I loved hearing how, you know, you didn't get a board of directors set. You didn't do all these fancy things. You just started doing it and, and God just multiplied it and he still continues to. And the other part of that that was catching my attention is reaching out to a human being, their, one of their basic needs, hear their name said. So to see their 
their name on a Bible that's handed to them, that communicates more than I want to give you the word of God. That communicates, man, I love you and I care for you. That personal touch, I just, I can't imagine what that would be like. I'm sure you got to have a smile on your face or anybody who's helping you with that. So that oh, it's was amazing. Really, really fun to hear. Amazing. Yeah, we bought an imprinter. Now we have friends that have them. We have about four, five imprinters in, in the Houston area. We'll do secular events, you know, Christmas parades and all kind of things. And we'll set up tables and we'll have uh, Bibles and out in the front, free Bibles with your name on it. We use that as evangelical tools. We'll blow through 300 or 400 nice Bibles. Yeah. Tons of people will get saved. It's a, just a wonderful mm -hmm. way to introduce the gospel, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one or whether it's what we do at a major event. It's not often, probably three, four times yeah. a year. Okay. The hey, last question in this segment that I'd like you to address real quick is, so the trucking industry obviously has changed all the regulations and inflation and price of fuel and truck stops changing, all the kind of stuff. If you could give us some advice or if any you know, truck stop owner, trucking company owner you know, is listening, what would you see as a way that we can better support Christians who are professional drivers and in the trucking community? Because we hear that request, that need a lot, that how can we help Christians who are in this? Just know that that the Holy Spirit is there and, and that each load has a destination and that each place God is calling you to do and to submit to his power inside. Now, I know you're thinking, and I know it's true. I work at UPS, but all I know is this, is that whether I work at UPS and that's my master or whether I work as unto myself as a contractor, he's the ultimate master and he's the ultimate boss and he is going to provide all of that with that but that each destination has a place for you to share who jesus is and there's a peace that surpasses all understanding inside of all of that that as you take loads as you go places and as an independent person even as a ministry that i have I pray about things and that peace is there. And so I, I follow through with it. So as each load is each place that you're going, make sure that that Holy Spirit is inside of you, giving you that peace that surpasses that. And he will guide, lead and provide on all of it because he cares mightily for you and for your family. Yeah, no, I appreciate hearing that because what you know it just sounds like you're saying is like, no, you're you're a disciple of Jesus. You're the light, you're the image of God that is driving whatever the load is, that really doesn't matter. It's important, yes, but that doesn't matter as much as you being that wherever you go. So that way you see yourself as proactive versus dredging through some things. So yeah, that's I wasn't expecting that kind of an answer, but hey, that's great. Uh, we need to take uh, another break here before we get into the final segment. Uh, where we're going to hear you just talk about how you can help your drivers as they want to be an impact in, in their world and, and wherever it is that they are. So we'll be back again after this break. Hey, drivers. Did you hear music on TNC Radio.live that you really liked? Or maybe you heard us interview an author of a book you'd like to read or listen to. You can get the books, music, and other products you hear about by going to our website at www.tncradio.live and clicking on the shopping cart. Do you have the TNCRadio.live app? It's free and easy to download. Just go to app.tncradio.live, Google Play, or the App Store. Get access to live streaming radio developed by drivers for drivers. Download the TNCRadio.live app today. I'm Hope Sabara. Join us on TNCRadio.live at 7 p.m. Eastern with Building Strong Minds with your host, Dr. Christopher Cortman. Welcome back to Trucker's Life Radio on TNCRadio.live. We are going to wrap up our conversation here with Paul Stege. And so, Paul, it's been wonderful just to, to hear your life and how God got you into the ministry piece, just the way that he did sort of by accident, just following the Holy Spirit. And we ended the last segment there with, you know, how can the trucking industry, how can things help the Christian driver? And I just appreciated what you said about that. So as we, you know, close out on this last segment, so if there are you know, Christian drivers out there, or those who are involved in the trucking community, 
What are some practical ways that you can suggest to them where they can have an impact on reaching drivers with the gospel of Jesus, reaching those in the trucking community? What are some ideas from Paul? Well, that, that comes from daily, daily preparation. And I, what I mean by that is, is it's, it's pretty simple, you know, um, in a certain sense, because we take that time out, no matter what time the day is that you wake up or whatever you do, you don't turn on your phone. You open God's word up, you know, Proverbs 8, 17 says that I love those who love me and those that seek me early shall find me, not might find me. We seek the one that makes each and every day first. And we get in his word and we ask the Holy Spirit, you know, John 14, 26 says the Holy Spirit was given to teach us and to bring things to remembrance. And even now that I, as I'm speaking right now, I'm throwing crowns at his feet because I'm not really reading anything. He's just popping scriptures in, in my brain. But that comes from spirit and truth, spending time with him. And so as, as we move on and, and through, throughout that day, when we, when we shut that door or when we open that door from wherever our quiet time or whether it's in a cab or whether it's at home, the first person we greet is probably our, our, our family or whoever it is. But aren't you better off? having spent time with Jesus first, then you are not spending time with Jesus and giving the world you. When the Bible says there's no good thing inside of us, instead of putting inside on a daily filling, not that you're not getting, getting saved every day. It's just you're asking God to fill you for what is needed for that day, but it's so daily. But then when you understand that, you understand that 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, you know, it says, pray without ceasing. For this is the will of God. And you understand that that's what praying without ceasing is because my flesh is so weak that I've, I've got to be dependent on what the Holy Spirit is having me do in the moment. And when fleshy stuff comes up, no matter what it is, um, I, I've, Lord, you saw that or Lord, help me or whatever the case is. Like even when I, I prepare myself, I buy Bibles as, as we've noted I buy them for through Harper Collins or through Christian book uh, distributors and I buy Bibles. I'm ready to give an answer at all times. I'm ready to give the words of life. So I sow God's word with my stuttering mouth and ask God to line up that day to bring people across my path that would know. So it's not like I'm hunting. I'm just ready. And he provides because it's in his will that all men shall be saved. So I just agree with that. And whoever, wherever I go, whether it's a person across the other pumps or whether it's someone I'm getting out to go to the restroom, I carry a Bible and a promise book under my arm. And whoever brings across the where there's a conversation to be had, God always lines it up. It's, and again, some things it's just handing them a Bible, saying, have a blessed day if there's no time. Then other times God will offer a niche of time and you give those sweet words of life that the Holy Spirit is bound to and fruit produces. Hmm. You know, I appreciate that. Cause I mean, the question could almost be phrased as, you know, looking for a formula here's step one, two, three, four, ABC, but I love how you answered it more. It's just a big picture of that staying so connected. So that way you're, you're seeing with the eyes and heart and compassion of Jesus for whatever he has. And he's going to be the one that prompts you to do whatever it is. So I really appreciate it. You know, here and now. Yeah. If I could add one more thing to yeah, that, that the yeah. Holy Spirit's, prompted me to when you do these things is your faith increased or is your faith decreased and that's the main thing is we're bringing jesus out with us wherever we go and then life isn't so mundane it has purpose and reality and and, and it's got jesus is so connected to the world that you're in it's so personal that your just mind is blown away i remember um i say this story a lot but you know I, I went to I went to this place around oh, for for a while for about a year meet, uh, uh, meeting a guy and it was a pretty bad part of town but just I, I remember coming up you know into this place I did it every day carried Bibles in probably gave away three to five Bibles in a half an hour every day there waiting on the Memphis driver to come and this young lady came out and she was very you know not dressed well young girl and uh, I was going into the Shell station and. And uh, she was parked in the front. There was a person sitting up there. And I just remember, you know, God gave me a word of knowledge. And I had the Bible in, in my hand. And I said, is it your birthday today? 
and she froze and she goes, it is my, my birthday today. And I handed her a Bible and, and, uh, she just immediately bawled. And when I realized wow. like I felt the weight of the prayers of the saints yeah. for this girl, and it was a, she was a pastor's daughter and she was in, in rebellion and in sin. And she immediately covered her shame and, and just bawled and, you know, know how, you know, where the Lord shows you to, when you enter into him another man's labors, well, this family had raised this girl, right? Be, be, be careful to give an answer that is, it's not the big man upstairs. I just looked at her and I just felt Jesus inside of my heart saying, go sin no more, go home, follow Jesus, follow him, follow the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the impact, you can be an answer to someone's prayers. And I don't mean like you can, you know, but God can use you to do right. that, right. you know? Yeah, I love hearing that. I love hearing just how man, you're just there and prepared for whatever. And the Lord just, he does the work and you just happen to be in the the vessel being used. I appreciate that. Uh, before we get to the end and, you know, how can people who are listening, how can they help you? How can they donate? Whatever they can do. I want to ask. So with you being on the road, like what are things you do to continue to move forward in your discipleship process? Like what are things that you do for, for caring for yourself that way? Uh, if you can give some practical ideas on that. Oh yeah. Super important. It's just a great question with a great answer, man. Oh man. There's so much good material with technology as much as I hate it. And you know, we struggled with, we got on the phone. Yep, yep. Um, I mean, goodness gracious, there's Calvary Chapel, Philly, Calvary Chapel, Ch uh, 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 Chester Springs. And I'm not a Calvary. I mean, I, I mean, I am, but it's, there's so much good material out there with good apps that teach God's words. So when you're out on the road, utilize your time wisely. You know, when you're in a safe place, you know, set up a time, you know, that you turn on an app and you, 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 you find a message. The reason I really want to talk about the Calvaries a lot is they, they tend to be line by line, book by book. So that a person can learn a whole book, can learn, you know, the book of James or the gospel of Matthew or whatever in a systematic daily study. So you can, you're listening and you may not agree with everything, but you're being fed. And again, it's, it is pre-digested milk to a certain sense. You need to be responsible to be in God's word every day. And that's the Holy Correct. Spirit yeah, to, to teach you. But also as you're going you know, if you're listening and feeding yourself through wonderful messages and communications like that, you're so much more ready to give the gospel and, and prepare yourself instead of the, the nonsense and the garbage that's, that's out there that we so fall easily pray to, you know? Good. Yeah. I appreciate hearing that. I love how you got to be proactive. You can't just wait, wait for things. Um, so how I want to end things. So we heard from you. And you're just a regular Paul that God has used, but he's expanding the work of the ministry. I'm sure that people who are listening would want to get involved. How can they help? So what are the specifics? Where can they send? What can they do? Give us all that information. Well, you know, I, I've never really advertised, so I don't really know how to answer it. But um, I, I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, oddly enough, we just opened it up like four months ago, and that's a total miracle into itself. I can't get into it now because the time is short. But there's, you know, it, it, it'll have an email on there, paulgstv okay. at, at yahoo.com. And then um, if they want to donate, you know, it's got... A, they would email me on that and I, and I can show them. And, and again, that would only be if they're led to, and that's what I really, really want. I, the Lord is so amazing and all of that. And, and I just don't want to petition in that way because he's got it all. But if people feel led to and want to, they right. can give that through that. I can communicate with them through that or the Paul Stiggy ministries at Gmail and uh, such an honor and a, a pleasure uh, to be in, in on here to just to say his name and i i uh you know it's such a privilege to say his name every day i don't deserve to but i get to yeah no, that's great and you know i appreciate that i know you you didn't, didn't come on here to promote yourself and ask we asked you to be on the show and i'm the one asking how can people support you because people want to support something they believe in and when it comes to the gospel coming to the bible and especially with the embossed names. I mean, that's something that's still kind of blowing me away that you would do that and take that extra step 
to personalize the attention given to somebody. I mean, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. So they go to your YouTube channel, Paul Stege. They find your email address there. And it's Paul Stege Ministries at Gmail. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. Yep. P-A-U-L-S-T-E-G-E ministries at gmail.com. Okay. Great. Paul, it has been fun to talk to you. I had heard a little bit about you. I had to do some research. And the more that I did, I was just loving it. You're one of those guys that's contagious, whether in a good way, whether you know it or not. And so I hope that we all, including myself, just feel inspired to stay so connected to the Holy Spirit and he's going to use us. So God bless you. Thank you for sharing with us today. And for uh, this is us signing off here, Truckers Life Radio on TNC Radio Live, and we'll see you next week. I hope you enjoyed the show. Let us hear from you. Send email to truckerslife at tncradio.live. Stay tuned. Do you have the tncradio.live app? It's free and easy to download. Just go to app.tncradio.live, Google Play, or the App Store. Get access to live streaming radio developed by drivers for drivers. Download the tncradio.live app today. Don't forget, you can hear all of our TNC Radio primetime shows again on our podcasts. Just go to tncradio.live slash podcasts or search for tncradio.live wherever you listen to podcasts. 